Hello and welcome back to Operations with Rock and Void. For those of you new to the channel, welcome. For those of you who are returning, you may notice that I'm not in the port and I'm at the screen for uh, purchasing a ship. And that is because today we will be going over, well, showcasing with the USS Hornet. Now, a while back when they had the Night of the Museum, they gave away a bunch of codes for one-day rentals for the USS Hornet, Belfast, Texas, and Friesland. And so I ran the Hornet a bunch to test it out. And so the Hornet, it has basically one, well, it has a few things. Uh, it uses armor-piercing bombs, which U.S. carriers do not use armor-piercing bombs, the uh, tech tree ones. The Enterprise is the other U.S. carrier that uses armor-piercing bombs. It has larger attacking flights, but they're slow. And it also has the gimmick of uh, a tactical squadron. The tactical squadron doesn't matter how many you shoot down, the next flight will be at full uh, squad, uh, full number of planes, no matter what. And this one, which is a neat a tribute to history, one of the few thing times that Wargaming puts something in that's a very much a tribute to history, and that's is the B-25 Tactical Squadron, which is based off of the Doolittle Raid. I could go on and on about the Doolittle Raid including how some of the members who were shot down were tried for war crimes for shooting up places in, shooting up civilians in Japan. Anyways, so we'll be show, uh, showcasing using the horn for this one. This is, from, might be my last carrier for a while. I wasn't planning on showing show, showcasing a carrier video this week, but I just didn't have any other good videos for Aegis, which is the operation that we are going to be showcasing. And so we'll be talking about how to run a carrier in Aegis. And even though the Hornet has the gimmick of the uh, tactical bombers, it's not that much different from a carrier. Anyways, with that, let's head into battle. Now, for Aegis, uh, for a carrier, there's really two routes you can take. And uh, we are in a division with two other players, so we are going to take the uh, route that carriers are recommended to take all the time. The other route, which is you can do solo, and that's where you go up to B4 and you the B4, C4, and you hide behind that island to take out the two battleships. And that is what I used to do when I was soloing. And that's what a lot of people who have not played in Division do. But that's not actually the recommended route for carriers. And it's mainly because if there's a destroyer, or in this case, our, we have three destroyers in our division, that is not where you want to be in a carrier. You want to leave those northern battleships actually to your destroyers. And here, uh, so here I am marking the route. That is the route you want to take in a carrier. And if you notice where the carrier is going to sit, it's going to be behind an island and you're going to be very close to uh, the, uh, the last wave while being safe. Now here we have a lot of AA, so we're going to try and hit the uh, the Akizuki. And we hit it with three torpedoes. And there's a Kitakaze there and a Tokachi, and there's where all the AA is, because Tokachi I believe also has def AA. And between the two... AA destroyers and the and Tokachi is an AA cruiser. It's a lot of AA there, even with just the three ships. 
And so since we lost a lot of planes, that's why we're swapping to bombs for our next one. We're going to see if we can hurt the Tokachi there because it's an AA cruiser and we want it gone. Now these bombs are a level bomber. So now that we got two citadels. So they're not as accurate, supposedly, as dive bombers, but they throw out enough bombs. I believe they throw out, what, five bombs? One per plane. Even though the plane used, the plane model is used is uh, actually a dive bomber. It's a purpose-built dive bomber. They do a level bombing tactic. I'm gonna try and get rid of the Tokachi. Uh, someone else got it before us. So you notice how we're keeping the this route takes us. It keeps the island between us and the first wave. And then we're stealthy enough that the second group does not spot us. So this is how we... How a carrier stays undetected. And we're still really close. So our planes don't have much time until they're already attacking. And that is how you increase the DPM in any carrier. Is being close to what you're trying to target. A lot of people like to stay as far away as possible and while that makes for a safe carrier gameplay uh, that's also handicapping yourself by increase, severely decreasing your DPM by increasing flight time. And if you notice the second wave, it's almost been cleaned off by uh, our two division mates. That's a good, when you have good division mates or you have a good player on your team, that's usually what happens to the second wave. Either it gets cleaned up pretty quickly or most things are uh, dead pretty or dead or half dead pretty quickly. Whenever I take a destroyer or a cruiser that can stealth torp, that's what happens. An Anchorage can't stealth torp, except it can because it has smoke. That's, that's the only thing. Anchorage is also was a dockyard ship, so yeah, you can't get it. It's a great ship for ops. You can't get it. Uh, as for Hornet, the planes slow so incredibly slow so 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 slow so here we're using the heal to try and and heal back and we actually uh only lost one plane because of that so we're able to take a, uh, get a second drop. And these ships here, the center ones, they do not have any AA. They used to be easy kills and free kills for carriers because they have no AA. But now that they use consumables and they all come with fighters, uh, then you have the issue of fighters. German CVs, they can get away with it because they can. you can actually go in attract the fighter's intention, and then kite the fighters all the way to your allies to get them shot down. Uh, all the other CVs can't do that. Germans are the only ones that can do that because they... Well, maybe the implacable. Right. Implacable? Indomitable? The, uh, the British carry that only gets two types of squadrons, but uh, they're all both the uh, Sea Hornets. That's the, probably the only other carrier that could do it. Not like it's very good as a CV and ops. And honestly, these uh, bombs, they, they're not that great because they're only good against large targets. Uh, specifically, 
they're, they're great against carriers. When you hit a carrier with them, oh my, do they... They'll do 20k damage, easy. And they're okay against battleships. It depends on the battleship. But otherwise, the uh, tactical squadron... They do about the same as a normal squadron. The only thing that's really good about them is planes losses don't matter. So you don't have to worry about planes losing planes and they allow your other squadrons to uh, recuperate. So if you notice how far away we are now, we're very, because our carrier is so far away, it's difficult for us to get to the enemy in time. Well, it takes so long to get to the enemy that we're not. It, this is waste time of not doing damage. And it's even worse because we're in the Hornet, which has the slowest planes. The slowest planes at tier 8. And so we got a flood, so the DCP's down. Um, we're going to try for another flood. And so we actually launched our planes a little bit out, so it puts the uh, torpedoes in the water longer, so that it gives the DCP chance to run out, so hopefully we get another flood. At which we did get a flood. And so that allows the ticking to either a counteract the uh, damage the uh, heal for the Magi, uh, b uh, the flood should actually last long enough that the it will actually do a good amount of damage to the Magi. And as you see, our allies took care of the uh, the two Nagatos. So when you're not going up north to the BC and focusing on those battleships what you're doing is you're getting close so you can just focus on the Amagi. I think I'm I was going at half speed and that's why it's taking so long for my carrier to get into position. And there we go, triple fire. And so we were trying to rush up for the Amagi to get that triple fire while the DCP was still down. Because the tactical squadron uses HE bombs. And as you see, it didn't take long for the DCP to go for it to use its DCP again, but our allies were able to kill it shortly after. So now we have armor-piercing bombs and broadside on targets. Not a good combination. And we have the Kitakaze, who by itself, with the buffed flak from uh, all the bots having buffed stats. Actually, I'm not sure how much the uh, flak they, the Kitakaze normally has. But yeah, the Kitakaze by itself just saturates an area with flak, and it's bad. And having slow, not so maneuverable planes means you're going to take a lot of damage. The Torps. Oh, Torps don't delete the Kitakaze. There, Kitakaze is down. So, but still, there's a, three ships cl uh, clustered up. Even with the lower Japanese AA, that's still a good amount of AA. We're trying to get the Miyoko. The Miyoko is turning broadside to someone else. So. We only get one torpedo. Honestly, I don't recommend the Hornet because the planes are so, so, so slow. It, it was interesting, but with how slow the planes are, it just was not fun.
uh, as fun as other carriers. Like, sure, the horn, the the tactical squadron was interesting, but it's uh, if you're a collector, then maybe. But otherwise, I, I actually don't recommend it. And see, we're uh, I, as a carrier, that was an okay game, and we're middle of the team. If it was a faster, if we had faster planes, we might have actually done better. If we didn't miss a couple of drops or drop on things that were already dead. Actually, I don't think we even got a kill there. Ah. Anyways, that is how to run a carrier. If you have a better carrier, you'll probably do a lot better than this. The best we did was to the Yamagi with 62k damage. But if you had a better carrier, you'd probably do a lot better. Get some kills. Be high and get more base experience. And possibly even carry your team if they do poorly. But otherwise, if you have any questions, you want to see something else, you want to do anything, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down or whatever. If you want to see more content and... Uh, it's probably not going to be carriers from now on. It's probably going to be something else. I notice I don't have a lot of destroyer videos, so I need to do some more destroyer videos. So if you want to see more content, just or you want to see something specific, let me know, and I'll do it. But otherwise, just subscribe, and you'll see more random weekly operations. Uh, starting here back in a week or so, I'll be off my 56 hour work week and I should be able to post uh, two videos if someone has a specific request. I can post request videos or explanation videos or something else as a second video a week instead of this current schedule where I can barely do one video because I'm working seven days a week. Anyways, I hope to see you next time and I hope you have a good one.